Welcome to the Evolution of Evolution, Part 1, The Greeks. Some people are under the mistaken impression that the concept of evolution begins with Charles Darwin in the mid-1800s. The truth is that he was building upon concepts that had been laid far before he was born. To find the origins of the idea of evolution, we must trace it back into history beyond the founding of the Islamic religion, beyond the Crusades, and even beyond the birth of Jesus and the founding of Christianity itself. To find the beginning of the concept of evolution, we have to trace back all the way to the ancient Greeks and a philosopher by the name of Anaximander. Anaximander believed that the universe began with the Aperion, the boundless, the infinite void, and that at some point a hot spot formed and expanded out, that the entire universe burst forth from this one point, and in the end cooled in some places, heated in others, until it formed the universe as we know it. Not too dissimilar a concept to the Big Bang Theory, depending on whether one wants to use a little imagination or not. Anaximander is credited with making the first world map, though it's not one that we would recognize as the world today, as he based it on the idea of a flat, cylindrical world with a river flowing around it at all sides. Still, it was an attempt at advanced geography. Anaximander believed that the world was covered in water originally, and that it was in this water that life began. He believed the first kind of life was a fish with very thick hide, and that from these, humans were able to develop. As an experienced sailor, it is quite possible that he got this conclusion from sharks. There are different types of sharks, some of which lay eggs, some of which carry eggs within them until they hatch and give live birth, and others that actually do produce a placenta-like effect similar to that in humans with an umbilical cord for feeding the young. While Anaximander's concept that we came directly from fish may not be state-of-the-art in evolutionary theories, it is important to note that he is among the first people to put forward the idea that humans even could come from other animals, thus beginning the entire concept of evolution. Like many of his contemporaries, Empedocles believed that the universe was composed of four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. It was his thought that in times of chaos, these elements were driven apart from each other, but at the beginning there was a time of complete peace where all four existed in unison. This concept naturally led him to the conclusion that all species would also have existed in one form together at one point, thus creating the first concept of an original species from which others could diverge. A student of Plato and teacher of Alexander the Great, Aristotle was considered an expert in many fields, including physics, metaphysics, poetry, theater, music, logic, rhetoric, linguistics, politics, government, ethics, biology, and zoology. Using his knowledge, Aristotle was able to construct a primitive evolutionary path. In his case, the setup was more of a straight line versus the branching concept that we get from Darwin's later aspects. In Aristotle's work, we have the first signs of a very primitive phylogenic tree. Through observation, Aristotle traced the idea of life emerging from inanimate objects, transferring through plants, eventually to aquatic invertebrates, insects, fish, amphibians taking steps on land, reptiles, birds, and mammals. Even modern taxonomy doesn't place these too far different as far as order of development goes. Mm -hmm.